the same yesterday, today, and forever. Never changing. Thank you, Lord. That we have one thing for sure in this world. And that is the foundation of your word that does not change. That is true because you said it. It is true, Lord. With all the falseness, with all the speculation and the, and the choices there are in the world. This is one thing that is settled in Jesus' name. And we thank you for that truth. Amen, amen. God bless all of you. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Tammy, for opening. Thank you, worship team. Great job, as always. And thank all of you for sharing. Amen. Your testimonies and uh, the words from the Lord. It's a blessing to all of us. Amen. To hear the voice of God from so many different perspectives. Amen. And yet, it's cohesive. It all fits together and it, it all makes perfect sense to us. So praise God. Amen. I want to... It's amazing to me. I, I'm, I'm so grateful for all of it because so much of it is exactly what I want to talk to you about this morning, what the Lord has put on my heart. And that's not unusual because we all have the same spirit, praise the Lord. We all are spirits. And I think sometimes we forget that. And uh, the devil would like to distract us and have us focus on this flesh, uh, on our bodies and, and circumstances and so forth. But the truth is, we are spirit beings. That makes us like God. God is a spirit. He said, they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. And so we have to constantly remind ourselves that we are spirits. And so we are to affect the natural, and the natural is not supposed to affect us. Exactly. And the way we do that is, as we've said, we take authority over this body. How do you do that? By renewing your mind and saying what God says and doing what God does. It's that simple. It isn't all the other, you know, religious stuff that we think this we want to make this body do. It's just simply, if you get your mind in tune with what God is saying, your body will just follow. It has to. It, it can only do what you think. Right? Yes. And you think before you speak. You have to think before you act. Yeah. Regardless of how, you know, uh, reactive it might seem to us. The truth is there's always a thought that comes before any action. Always a thought that comes before anything that comes out of our mouth. And if our mind is renewed to the Word of God, right. the natural result of that will be supernatural. Right. It will be what God says. And that will, you know. So the devil comes to get us in the flesh or to get us into our natural way of thinking and distract us from who we really are in God and what our authority is. And what our responsibility. How many of you feel a little bit awkward when you start exercising your authority? Mm -hmm. You know, you speak to things. Yeah. You speak to the storm. You speak to the yeah. to the bill. You speak to the doctor's report. Yes. You sp and you, we speak to things, yes. and yes. we change them by those yes. by the things that we say when we believe it. Amen. But it's awkward. It feels awkward because partly because we don't do it often enough and consistently right. enough, yeah. and partly because it's so unhuman. Yeah. It's right. God. That's what God does. That's how God operates is by His Word. He speaks and things follow. Amen? And that's faith. And uh, so I appreciate everything everybody has said because it's, it, it is in tune with what God, what the Spirit is saying. And so obviously, we've got to get to the end of all this religious stuff yes. to really begin to be who God has declared us to be. And I think that's what so much of this, the grace message, and so many of the things that we're hearing uh, even in the church world today that are so unlike things that we've heard for 25, 30 years right. prior to that. Because in order for God to have His image in this earth, there's got to be some changes in us. We can't just keep doing stuff the same way we've always done and expect that all of a sudden, well, God's just going to have some pity on us and come up and show up. No, He's He's looking for a manifestation right here. Praise the Lord. And for that to happen, we've got to start talking like Him. We've got to start acting like Him. Praise the Lord. So, thank the Lord. Amen. It's exciting, but... Now you have to uh, deal with this for a moment because I have to do this. It's a, it's a burden that God has put on my heart. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness for that lie. You know what they say about cliffhangers? Praise the Lord. You know what? Uh, I said a while back my second favorite F word after Friday is frugivorous which means a fruit eater, right? Well, my favorite fruit, I think, is bananas. Uh, they're appealing to me. <laughs> okay. You're such a happy body. One more. 
more. I'm thinking about, you know, at some point, becoming a bank teller. One of my good friends, a friend of mine is a bank teller. Michael works for Viridian. I'm always teasing him. And he actually has to listen to a lot of this stuff. I, he's, he's feedback for me, praise the Lord. But anyway, I've been thinking about becoming a bank teller. And I'm pretty sure I can do it. I mean, you just call banks and tell them stuff. <laughs> so, you know, Cindy could be a career choice. Just you know, think about it. Exactly. I'm sure. See, that's what I'm saying. You can do this. You can do it. We could. We could. Give it a shot. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. We're going to start with Luke chapter 5, verse 17 through 25, Peter. Luke 5, 17 through 25. Now remember, we've been talking about some things, and all the stuff that we've been going through, I, you know, what I've been seeing, what God is, is basically saying to me is, He's taking us from here to here. Here is where He wants to operate. Yes. Here is kind of the way we all come into this, through religious kind of stuff, and mixtures, and all kinds of other things. And then little by little, he has been dealing with all of us over the years even. Right. And uh, most recently here in the last five, six years maybe. But And tell, again, I'm just going to repeat some things that I said last week just because this, these things have to be established. Until we know that the sin issue is settled, right. you, can't, you can't go any further. Yeah. Because unless you know that everything is good between you and God, right. you're going to be struggling all the time trying exactly. to do something. Yep. In yourself, it's going to make God do something that He's already done. Exactly. So we have to have that settled. We have to be have it settled that the sin issue is not an issue for us anymore. Amen. If we know that, we'll start we'll start acting better. I mean, if you got some issues in your life, and we all have them, yep. some of those things would be settled just by themselves, just by not yep. the, the shame and the guilt and the anxiety and the stress of trying to be better and do better all the time and and do something that's going to please God. If we know. If we are absolutely confident in God's love for us and His forgiveness, man, that will set you free. That will yes. give you a freedom to, op to, to live your life in a whole different way. Amen? So that's number one. The other thing is that, that we are God's image in the earth. Yes. That's what Sally was telling Tammy. The head and the body can't be disconnected. If, if, if He's the head and we're the body, then yeah. we're one. Yeah. We're not two separate entities. We're just one thing. Jesus came to the earth. He's still in the earth. Yeah. Now, I know He went to heaven, but He's still here. He left His Spirit. He sent back the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, which is Christ in you, the yes. hope of glory, in us. And so He's still here. So now, last week we talked about, if we have that settled, okay, He's the sin issue's dealt with. We're, we're not going to think about it. We don't have to fool with that anymore. And we are God's reflection or God's image in this earth. Right. And as we talked about being that image or being that reflection of God, then there's a way that we have to live. Right. And the way that we have to live is not a religious way. Right. It's a disciplined way, which means we say what God says. Exactly. We do what God does. Yes. Amen? Yes. Because otherwise, we're a mask. Yes. You know, we're just running around pretending to be something right. that we're not. Right? Yeah. But if, if we take the mask off, it's just whatever I look like is what I look like. But here's what I am. Right. Amen? Right. I am what my Father says right. I am. Yes. I can do what my Father says right. I can do. Right? right? So I just have to say what He says about every situation and circumstance that I come up against. And then act on that word. Right. Stop talking about being like God or acting like God in the sense that I'm pristine and holy in my flesh. But it's saying, okay, if God says that by His stripes I'm healed, then I'm healed. Exactly. And I'm going to walk out my life, as Don was saying earlier, as though that's the ultimate truth. That is the bottom line. Now, here, just think about this for a minute. I said last week, everybody needs, and we're going to read this in a moment, in where I get this from in Acts, or excuse me, in Luke chapter 5, 17. There's these two guys that help the other guy who's crippled. They pick him up, they take him up on the roof and tear the roof off and drop him down in, in front of Jesus. These are two crazy guys. These are crazy, but they have faith. They have great faith. Yes. That's the kind of crazy I'm talking about. Yeah. I've known a lot of crazy people in my life. I've been one of them at times. 
But I want, I, I'll settle for two faith crazy people right. as friends yes. that I know I can depend on. You know, Jesus went around, he had to run people out of the prayer room or out of the hospital room or out of the funeral home or whatever it was because they didn't have faith. Right. They were just speaking to what circumstances yes. they were looking at. Everybody needs at least two crazy faith people in their lives that will stand with them and declare what God says, exactly what Don is talking about with his brother. Just get nuts about what the Word of God says. Forget about everything else. Forget the doctor's report. Forget the feelings. Just think about it. When you get healed and you still have symptoms, does that mean you're not healed? No, if you believe what God says, you're healed as soon as you believe it. You will have whatsoever you say. Amen. It becomes yours. Now you still got symptoms. Well, look at it in this perspective. When you got saved, yeah. you just believed exactly. what God said, right? Yes. Now, symptoms come up every once in a while that will say, I don't think you're saved. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's a stupid action. That was a dumb thing to say. That was really ignorant. That wasn't very Christian, right? Yeah. Symptoms. But the Word of God says you're saved, so you don't let those symptoms, although they may annoy you and make you feel a little yeah. funny, they don't change your belief that you are saved. Healing works the same way. It, I believe it, and when I believe it, I'm healed. Whether I, I still may have some symptoms, but the symptoms don't change the fact of what God has said. The same way about your finances. He said, He became poor that you would become rich. When you believe that, it's yours right that moment. Even though there may be some symptoms that are saying you've got some financial problem. No. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. Financially, I'm perfect. Praise God. That's how it works in every area of our life. Symptoms will always come. The symptoms are the natural things that the devil uses to get you to not believe what the Spirit has spoken to you. Amen? So that's, that's key. Praise the Lord. That's, what we, that's where we have to, have to operate from. All right? So now let's, let's start here at Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 25. So it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were the Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting in which sitting by, which were come out of every town in, of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So the Lord was present to heal these religious people. He was there to he was the Spirit was present to heal anybody who would receive the healing. Yes. And behold, men brought in a bed, in a bed, a man which was taken with a palsy. And they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in, because of the multitude, they went up on the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when, he, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it is it easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk? But that you might know that the Son of Man has power upon the earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy couch, and go into thy house. And immediately he rose up before them and took up that wherein he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. You and I are son of man. Yes. But we are filled with the Spirit of God. Yes. That's why in another place Jesus says, Whose sins you forgive, I forgive. Now that sounds yeah. as crazy to me when I first read it as it must have sounded to these Pharisees and these religious people who had this whole religious mindset that how can a man right. forgive sins? I'll tell you how. Because Jesus came to restore our authority yeah. In the earth. Yes. The authority that Adam had originally. Yes. So we have the ability. Whose sins we forgive, God will forgive. Yes. Right? Amen. And just the same way, whom we can declare healed, yes. they are healed. Yes. That's, look, that's this. We are exactly like Jesus yes. right here. Yes. The only difference is what we believe. Exactly. Our authority is identical. Yes. We were born human beings sons of men, yes. and born again spiritually right. by God. Yeah. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Same as Jesus. Yeah. Everything's identical. The difference was Jesus believed it all and only said what God said and only That's did what right. God did. That's right. the, our issue is we're thinking, mm, I don't know, you know, I mean, I wasn't that great last week. I'm not sure. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe I don't want to 
forgive your sin because I'd like to have something to hold over you. Yes. Right? Okay. The guy that did the the, uh, the gas leak thing. Because Sally was always asking me, you smell any gas? I said, no, I don't smell any gas. But I don't sit on a stool there next to the stove on the computer either. So the only time I, I'm around the stove is if I'm cooking something. Well, then all I smell is when I'm cooking. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm not smelling gas. I'm just smelling whatever I'm burning or cooking or whatever I'm doing. So he, he says to me, uh, uh, I feel a I told you so coming. Because we were talking to him, you know, about what she's been saying this. And I, I just finally said, okay, have your way. And uh, so she had to leave and run some errands. And so I stayed there while he finished up the job. And when he got ready to leave, I thanked him for checking out every, because I had him go ahead and check the fireplace and, you know, any place there might be yeah. gas going to it, whether it was the hot water heater and everything else. And I thanked him and said, I really appreciate it. And I said, oh, and about that, I told you so. Of course, this won't be the first one. <laughs> You know, after 40 years, I've heard I told you so a few times. But I said, I guess even I, even I can handle that. I told you so. It's better than waking up on fire at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know. Praise the Lord. So, <laughs> hallelujah. Sometimes we should be quick to hear and slow to speak. Yes. Amen. Amen. And the problem is usually we're the opposite. We're a little slow on the uptake, on the intake, yep. and really quick on the outgo. Yep. You know, we we don't want to hear what God is saying because it's going to mean that we got to do something that right. we're not comfortable doing. Yep. Right. Amen. So we're a little slow, and then and and then we'll just run our mouth a lot of times without thinking. But we're supposed to be quick to hear and slow to speak. So hear what whatever the stuff is that's coming in and think before you respond to those thoughts. Amen. And think what God would say. Yes. What God would do. Yes. When you hear the doctor's report. And sometimes it is sympathy. You know, I mean, I think like Don's talking about his brother. I've been the same way. I, I had a sister who went through cancer and, and a, a younger brother that has health issues and stuff. And I can remember, you know, I'm praying, believing for their healing. And I believe in doctors. Don't get me wrong. If you don't have faith, you better go to the doctor. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have this thing settled that, you know, right. God has told me. I'm healed, and you've got to settle down, and you, you probably ought to go to the doctor. But I'm just saying, it's easy to be sympathetic to somebody who's going through that stuff and say, you know, come on, the doctors can help you. They, they could probably help you. And undermine what God is doing in that person. Yeah. That person saying, no. Right. You know, like, Though these skin worms devour me, yet I will believe the Lord. Yes. I will see Him in my flesh. Praise Jesus. the Lord. Yeah. And so that's when we need to get crazy. And get on board. Yes. Just whatever. I'm with you. Praise the Lord. Yes. God said it. That's it's going right. to happen. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. So, let's look at the, we got kind of this. Let's move on to Luke. It's still in chapter 5, uh, Peter. And let's look, let's just read verses 36 through 39. Now remember, we're talking about coming where we all came from, even as sinners, but even after that as believers, how the things God has done to try to bring us and here you had, we just saw this, all these Pharisees are there, and instead of wanting to believe for healing, instead of wanting to believe that this guy's sins can be forgiven, they want to get into theology. They want to start a religious debate here. They're really, they, they could have been healed too. I'm sure many of them had issues and stuff. They could have had that, but no, they were more interested in trying to pick apart the message, you know, or to dissect this guy and find out what's he up to, what's his agenda here. When he was trying to set him free. He was yeah. trying to set them up that the kingdom of God is near you and it shall be in you. He was trying to prepare them for a transition from an old way of thinking yes. into a whole new dimension. Yes. Not just the way you think, but everything about it is going to be different. Yeah. And you have to be prepared to make that change. Yeah. Amen? So, he spake also a parable unto them. Now remember, this is in that same setting. He said, heal this guy. These guys are arguing, debating about where is his authority coming from. And he's saying it's because I'm the son of man. And so he goes on to, to, to talk to these Pharisees and scribes. He says, he spake also a parable unto them. No man puts a piece of new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new make the rent. And the piece that was taken out of the new agreed not with the old. Now some of you ladies are so maybe you can just got rid of this. But if you take a piece of new cloth and sew it on an old garment, it, it's going to shrink. It's going to do what all material will do. It will change its molecular structure to some degree, and it will probably pull apart. 
I remember years ago, back in the 60s, when I was kind of a baby, I had some old jeans, and that was before people were going out and spending $100 for the jeans that were all ripped up. Yeah. You just ripped them up, and then you had to do something about the rips. And I had some leather, and I had sewed this thing, this leather pack. And man, uh, after about, I don't know, three or four washings, that thing ripped all the pieces. I mean, it pulled the leather, you know, pulled up and ripped the pants all apart. They were ripped worse than they were before. Well, that's kind of what Jesus is talking about. You can't put a new, can't put a piece of a new garment on an old. Otherwise, both of those two will get ripped apart. And the piece that was taken out of the new agrees not with the old. Right. All right? And no man puts new wine into old bottles. Else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles will perish. So, if you know anything about wine, it ferments. If you put it into an old bag or an old sheepskin or whatever it was they were using, it'll, it, as it grows, as it ferments, that wine is growing, it builds up pressure, it'll, bur it'll just burst the bag, the, the thing that they're drinking out, right? So no, no new wine, but new wine must be put into new bottles. And then both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desires new, for he saith the old is better. Aged wine is better than new wine. It's mellow, you know, it's not sour, it's not bitter, it's whatever. So that's what he's saying. So a person normally under those kind of situations would always say, I'll, I'll stick with the old. Mm -hmm. Right? Remember the, 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 the wedding banquet? Mm -hmm. The guy served the new wine first and saved the really good aged, expensive, you might say, stuff for the end. And the guy said, I've never seen anybody do something like this. He said, usually they always save the cheap stuff for the end because by that time nobody knows what they're drinking anyway. Right? Yeah. But you've saved the best for the last. All right? So this whole parable, I don't think I don't think what he means is you can't speak in tongues in a Lutheran church. Right. You understand what I'm saying? New wine, old wine skins, and so forth. But you see, the new covenant is not a patch on the old covenant. And that's what Jesus is talking about. He's telling them something new is coming. Yeah. Something totally unlike anything that you have understood. Okay? So the new covenant is not a spiced up old covenant with some additions. No. Which is what religion, for the most part, has yes. made it. Yes. Amen? It's not Jesus plus the law. Mm -hmm. It's a brand new covenant. Completely yes. different. Yes. And we've tried to put... New wine into old wineskins. Yeah. We tried to put new yeah. garments and patch it onto the old and try to make yeah. it work somehow. And he says it won't work. Both will be ruined. Yeah. Praise the Lord. It's no. It's the same mentality where he says a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Right. Amen. Yes. Put, you got some good bread here. Put a little leaven in. It's not unleavened bread anymore. It's leaven now. Yeah. Praise God. So for two thousand years now, the church has been trying to patch up an old covenant. Amen. And they're still carrying baggage from it. Yes. That's the thing that we're battling with. That's the thing that we all the testimonies we heard here today. That's what they were. They were saying, I, you know, I, this is how I've got to do this. And this is not the way we were taught. This is not how we were trained in church. This is not what we learned. Amen. Going up to in Bible school as little kids or, you know, uh, as adults when we came into the church or came into a relationship with God. That isn't the way we were taught. Right. No. Amen. It's the lack of a full revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. Which is exactly what everybody was talking about here this morning. The yes. focus has to be on Him. Yes. The focus has to be on the finished work. The focus has to be on a completely new paradigm here. We're not trying to mix the old with the new. The old is done away as far as we're concerned. We're in the new. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus is reigning on planet earth right now and we have to press into this kingdom reality that's the that's the that's the thing about it. the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violence take it by force we don't have to take it by force but we do have to press into it and the only way you can do that is by changing the way you think about our relationship with god and what his expectations are from us he doesn't expect us to be you know pristine in our you know, religious way of be believing or, or walking out our lives, He expects us to be pristine in our faith, in our belief, yes. in what He has said, so that we can get the results that He wants us to have. Yes. Praise the Lord. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 7. Just 
So he says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Now we're going to get into this a little bit more. We've talked about it before, but he says, in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. The ages to come will be in the generations to follow. In all the times that's going to come. He wants to show yes. His exceeding riches of His grace yes. in His kindness toward us yes. through Jesus Christ. Yes. That's God's, God, God's intention, alright? So look at Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. To the intent, the purpose for this, that, so that now unto the principalities, that's everything, that's angelic beings, that's fallen angels, that's demons, that's devils, yes. that's everything. All these powers in heavenly places might be known by the church. The church is going to reveal the manifold wisdom yes. of God to yes. all of these other <clears throat> arenas, to all these other beings, if you will. Yeah. All right? In the ages to come, he said, he will make known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Yes. Amen. The word church, most of you know, is ecclesiastia or ecclesiastes, and it means the called out ones. Yes. So what are we called out of? The first century church, this first age, right? was being called out of darkness into His marvelous light. Yes. They, were, they were being called out not so much from a, a secular world, which is what much of the church tries to teach us, that we've saved, now we're called out from the secular world. They weren't, they weren't called out from the secular world, but the religious world. That's, that's the reality of where Jesus was taking them out of darkness into His marvelous light. He was taking them out of the shadows, types and shadows, into the reality, into what the spirit truth really was. So it wasn't so much about the world out here. We don't have to worry about them. We've got authority over that if we would just have sense enough to use it. Amen? So the Mosaic system, uh, Moses, it just, Moses led the, 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 the children of Israel out of the wilderness, right? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. That world, and you can look it up in, uh, in Strong's Concordance, I think the world, word world there is uh, 174. If you look where it says world, there's a lot of listings for world. Most of them are a four-digit number, and I can't think of it off the top of my head. But that four-digit number translates cosmos, the world, right? Here, it is translated aeon, A-I-O-N. It's a Greek word that means age. So he's not talking about in the, at the end of the cosmos or at the end of the destruction of the world or whatever. He's talking about at the end of an age. Uh -huh. And the age that he's talking about is the end of the age of the law. Yes. So these things happened to, to them for examples. And they are written for our admonition, for us, yes. for our understanding, upon whom the ends of that age have come. Yes. So that the age of law has come to an end. Yes. And we know it has because we've read Scripture over and over and over about Jesus fulfilled it. It's finished. Yep. Amen. If you're in Christ, there is no law. Right. Okay, so that, right. that first, under Moses, that first 40-year generation, they saw a lamb that was taken out from among the sheep and the goats, and the blood was put on the doorpost, and the lamb was taken inside. Right? The generation of Jesus' time saw the real lamb of God yes. taken out from among the sheep and the goats, the human population. Amen? Yes. And John the Baptist said, Behold, the lamb of God yes. takes away the sin of the world. And we take him in yes. by the Holy Spirit. He becomes yes. one with us. Jesus. Amen? So, again, the first 40-year generation were baptized into the sea. It says by Moses, right? They went into the Red Sea. That was a type of baptism. The second 40-year generation were baptized into Christ. 
the first saw the manna fall in the wilderness, and they ate of it, right? Look at John uh, 6, 49 through 51, Peter. John 6, 49 through 51. Well, we've talked about these things before, and I know I'm, I'm maybe repeating myself in some areas, but it's, it's, the, the purpose of this is to get us to understand we're in a whole new thing. And unless we really begin to operate there, we cannot get the benefits of this new thing. Right. I've heard a lot of people talk about this new thing. God's doing a new thing. God's, and He is. But if we're going to drag the old in with the new, we're not going to get the benefit of either one. Right. So this is where... He's trying to get us to make a transition. Slice it right here. Move over here and yes. forget all of that back there and don't ever go back. Recognize that everything here is done differently. Yes. Everything here is by the Spirit. Everything here is by saying what I say. Everything here is by acting on what, your, yes. what the Word says. Yes. And not any of the rest of it. Exactly. So your father did eat man in the wilderness and they're dead. Yeah. So it wasn't that great. I mean, it kept them alive for a while, but it, they're all dead now, right? This is the bread which comes down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Yeah. Right? I am the living bread which came yes. down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And that bread that I will give him is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Yes. Yes. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth yes. out of the mouth of God. What don't we get about that? Yeah. We don't live... Amen. By our effort to produce bread for the table or whatever. I'm not saying we don't have, shouldn't have jobs and all that. I'm just saying that isn't how we really exist. And that isn't how we operate. We operate by the yes. Word of God. Yes. That will produce yes. everything you need yes. in your life. Yes. And abundantly beyond yes. what you can imagine. Yes. Praise God. Amen. So Moses' generation saw the physical picture, just the natural. And Jesus showed the reality of what that picture was talking about. And we're still running back to the picture yeah. when we have the reality. Yeah. You know what? I mean, I've got, I've got pictures of my grandchildren in my wall. In fact, I can't get to my driver's license half the time because there's somebody that's stuck in that one little pocket. But I'd much rather have the grandchildren running around the house, well, for a while anyway. <laughs> you know what? I mean, I'd rather be able to hold them and hug them and talk to them and interact with them than just look at a picture. Yeah. The picture is great. It reminds me of them, but it's just a picture. Yeah. And that's the reality of the old covenant. It was just a picture. And people are leaving the reality that they can embrace and be in one with and going back, amen, to something that is just an image. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, the old covenant is a shadow. The new covenant is the reality. Yes. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse, verses 13 through 16. 2 Corinthians 3, 13 through 16. I mean, we, we are supernatural. Yes. We are spirit beings. And we don't have to act weird and flaky. We can be as natural as we are, just who we are and what we are. Amen. And supernatural things will be a, a consequence of our believing what God says. And what the church has done has in, in the past 2,000 years is basically... Uh, you know, make us think that, yeah, you, you have some supernatural power, or some people do, but they have a special anointing where they are really good and really, you know, connected with God or something. And uh, you've got to really be weird so that people will recognize that you have this spiritual gift. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God, yeah, yeah, you know. And I'm not saying, we all get excited, we probably get a little loud when we get excited, but my point is this, all of that is hype. It's trying to say, look, I got something you ain't got. Yeah, that is true. So you need to come to me to get it. Because yeah. I have a special anointing. I, I have a special thing. Yeah. No, if you're born of God, the only difference between that person and you is that they believe they have something special going on and you don't believe it. Yeah. So you'd rather go have them pray for you than you just say what God has said right. about the situation. Right. Praise the Lord. So, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, and the children of God could not sit fast and look to the end of that which is abolished. So Moses, Moses put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel wouldn't recognize when the glory of God departed from him, right? He'd shine with the presence of God. And as the glory would depart, the people would take him less serious. Sure. I mean, when he was shining, uh -huh. uh, he, this guy's got something for God. He's got something wrong. So he got smart enough to realize. 
if they can see it go away, right. there'll be a point where they'll stop listening. Right. So he put a veil over himself so that they wouldn't know when he was right. going and when he wasn't going, okay? Right. To the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. Yeah. So there's a veil that comes over us that deceives us. That, that we can't tell what's God, what isn't God, because we don't recognize that that veil, as long as that veil is there, we don't see Jesus, we see the law. Right? right? The veil was to cover up the presence of God and the glory of God. Amen. And so that's what happens. Every time we go to the Old Covenant, there's a veil. And we can't see God. We just see the rules. We just see the, 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 the demands and, and what God expects out of us and so on and so forth. Nevertheless, so the Moses is read, the veil is upon our heart. So whenever the law is read, the veil is on our heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, or when you turn to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Yeah. When you turn to Jesus, that's, it, it, it won't affect you anymore. Yeah. You see Jesus. Yes. Amen. The perfect reality of yes. all that stuff was about. Yes. Amen. The veil. The veil has to be removed from our minds. The old covenant way of doing things has to be yes. taken away. Amen. Yes. It has to be done away. And the only way it can be done away with is in Christ. Yes. All right. So it's all about a revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. See, the, just think, go back to Luke 5 here, and you, you can see what I'm saying. The real power is the Spirit of God in a human being. Yes. Now, it's, it, if, if this is about a revelation of Jesus Christ, and this is the problem that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, and, and, and the scribes and, and all had, the problem was they didn't have a revelation. They didn't see that this was the Son of God. They didn't see this as God in flesh. Right? Can you know, they just want to go, huh, who gives you authority to forgive? Only God can do this. Which tells you immediately they had no clue. They were still stuck in this old paradigm, in this old uh, covenant kind of mentality that their sacrificial system has to go on here. You people, men aren't forgiving people here on earth. And I mean, who's this guy think he is? So their whole thinking was stuck in this other right. uh, arena that kept them from having a revelation of Jesus, having uh, the ability to see. The veil kept them from seeing Christ. Right. Yeah. If they had seen Him as Christ, then immediately the veil would have been lifted and they'd see that, hey, He's trying to take us someplace we haven't been. There's something exactly. better than what we've been dealing exactly. with. Amen? There's a whole new thing going on here, right? So look at Romans chapter 10 and verse 4. The real power of God is... The revelation of Jesus, whether it's in the Word, by the Word, what you're saying, what you're doing, or the fact that He is everything. He has control. It's no more the stuff that you're doing, amen, but it's what you're believing. Yeah. So for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. You don't, you cannot get righteous by the law. No. He's the end of that to everyone that believes. Yeah. We are now righteous, and the law had nothing to do with it. Exactly. They can't improve on righteousness. Praise the Lord. Because we are righteous, God is righteous, it gives us the ability, we've been restored to relationship with the righteous one, with God Himself, and that means that now we can operate in His authority on the earth. Yes. That's what the whole thing is about. That's the reason why sin had to be dealt with. Not, be, not because of the sin so much, as because it separated us from what God wanted for yes. Himself and for us yes. in the earth. Yes. Praise the Lord. So the Holy Spirit speaks to us from the mercy seat uh -huh. instead of the judgment seat. Yes. Yes. Anybody waiting on judgment, you're backing up. Because you're, if you're a believer, your judgment already took place in Christ. The moment you believed, you were judged and found innocent and declared righteous. Now the Holy Spirit deals with us from the mercy seat. Praise the Lord. He speaks to your potential. Not to your ability. He takes the weak things of this world and confounds the wise and so on and so yes. forth. The, the small things and, yeah. and, and, and shows himself yeah. mighty in those yes. things. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. So, he speaks to your potential. Not to your problems. Not to your weaknesses. Not to your failings. Exactly. Exactly. And if we don't believe it, we're stuck with the yes. other side of this. Yes. 
And that's where discipleship comes in. That's where discipline comes. Because everybody wants the easy way. We want the drive through. We want to just lay hand on me and, and anoint me with some oil and I'll just move on and I got it all together. How many have ever been prayed and had anointed and everything else and still had stuff? Yeah. Amen. It's because you've got the same anointing as whoever that was that laid hands on you and yes. prayed for you has. Yes. You were trusting in somebody's special yeah. gift instead of, special, instead of trusting in the one who is in you that is one with you. All right. Uh, John 16, verses 13 to 15. John 16, 13 through 15. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, Christ in you, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Now remember that. He's going to show us stuff. The Holy Spirit is in us. We don't. We don't let the Holy Spirit lead us. Amen. We let our intellect lead us. Yeah. And then we ask the Holy Spirit to bail us out. Yeah. We don't have confidence, amen, that He will lead us and guide us into all truth. Why? Because we're still operating somewhat under that old yeah. covenant rather than totally in the new covenant yes. where He's completely in charge. Yes. All right, so He'll guide you into all truth. He will not speak for Himself. He, he, whatsoever He shall hear, that's what He'll say. He'll only say what this says. Amen. And He will show you things to come. Yes. He will glorify me, Jesus is talking about, for He shall receive of mine and show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. Yes. Therefore said I that He shall take of mine and shall show it to you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. He will mentor you. Yes. He doesn't torment you. The Holy Spirit doesn't come to condemn you. Right. He comes to teach you. He yes. comes to lead you in God. But He cannot teach you if you're reading from two separate books. Exactly. You know, it's like your high school teacher. He's teaching science and you got the math book. You're, you're in trouble. Because yeah. none of it's going to make any sense. Right. He's, he teaches us one way, and that's by the Word of God. Yes. Not by somebody's opinion. Not by church tradition. Not by, you know, rules and regulations. He teaches us by the Word of God. He yes. brings it to our remembrance. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. So, His prophetic words, and this is all prophecy. Every word written here is prophecy. It's prophetic truth. And so He's going to use prophetic words to lead you. Amen. 2 Peter uh, 1, verses 2 through 4. 2 Peter 1, 2 through 4. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. What is that power? It's the same dunamis that He talked about in the, on the day of uh, uh, Pentecost, or the, when the Holy Spirit was poured out, amen, in the upper room. You shall receive power. What was the power? The Holy Spirit. Yeah. So the power that He uses... Amen. Knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, according as His divine power has given unto us, the Holy Spirit has given to us all things that pertain to life and to godliness through what? Through your good works? Through your religious rule keeping? No. Through the knowledge of Him that called you to glory and virtue. Yes. Praise the Lord. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by thee by his stripes are healed. This, that, and the other, all of these things that are the precious promises. That by these you might be partakers of the divine yes. nature. Yes. Amen. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Yes. And we've all thought that meant the corruption in the world through lust. That we've been chasing after some skirt, you know, or some guy. Yeah. You know? That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the corruption that is in the world is the unbelief yes. in God's Word and the belief in what the world system or the yeah. religious system teaches us. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That's true. Drop to verse 16 through 21, Peter. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory 
when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. This voice which came from heaven, we heard, and we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you would take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Praise the Lord. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy that came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. They were saying what the Holy Ghost yeah. was saying to them. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right, so his prophetic word is a more sure word because it is the testimony of Jesus in the spirit of prophecy. Yes. Yes. So I don't care about all of the preaching that I hear on Christian TV. I'm not against all of it. I'm not judging it or anything else. I'm just saying I have a more sure word of yes. prophecy than what anybody might tell me. Yes. And it's right here in this book. Yes. And I can always find out if they're telling me the truth or if they're just blowing smoke by going back to the Word of God and seeing what He says. I have a more sure word than even the word that these people had from the Holy Spirit because this has been written down for us. Yes. So we would know what God says about any given situation yes. or circumstance. Amen? Yes. So, let's, uh, Psalms uh, 11 verse 4. The Lord is in His holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold His eyelids stride the children of men. Now, that's beautiful, but let's think of it in terms of our reality here. That's the old covenant. David's speaking, but he's speaking prophetically, right? The Lord is in His temple. He's right here. Yes. I am the temple of God, right? Yes. The Lord's throne is in heaven. Hey, I'm seated with Him in heavenly places yes. in Christ Jesus. But this is a thing that I've got to, I have to operate spiritually because it doesn't make sense naturally. All right. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. Now, it doesn't mean he's tempting them or trying because God tempts no man. What it means is he's checking to see, do we believe this? Yes. He's seeing who does and who doesn't. Yes. Who's a believer and who isn't a believer? Because it was said already this morning, if you don't believe whatever God has for you, you can't experience it. Yes. Exactly. He has to know that you know that he's with you, that he's yes. with you and in you, and you are he are one. You have to operate from that reality to get yes. the benefit. Yes. Okay? So there is a restored temple. Amen? And that temple is you and me. Yes, it is. Praise the Lord. God doesn't live in temples made with hands. Yes. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Know ye not, you are the temple of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of God is in us. Amen? Exodus 2, uh, 5 through 13. Now, I, I may not read all this because you all know this description. But the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash us. No, that's not it. Uh, is that 12? 5 through 13? Oh, Exodus? 12. I thought it said 2. So. I may have. There. Your land shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, you shall take it. This is that first generation, remember? Mm -hmm. This is what God told them to do. Take it out from the sheep and the goats. You should keep it until the 14th day of the same month. The whole assembly of the congregation of Israel should kill it in the evening. They shall take the blood and strike it on the doorpost and the upper post of the house and wherein they shall eat it. And take it and eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roast the fire and unleavened bread with bitter curds. They shall eat it. There's all kinds of metaphors for that we won't go into, but eat not of it raw, nor sodden that all with water, but roast with fire his head with his legs and with the pupils thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remains of it, and until the morning it shall burn with fire. Thus shall ye eat it. With your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Now, just think about that for a moment. They were eating this, and they were to operate just like what God was saying. They were, or somebody was talking about Tammy, I guess, how freezing cold, what, what yeah. do you do if you believe that? You put your boots on, you put your long underwear on, you've got your snow shovel, and head for the front door, right? And that's, what he's, that's basically what he's telling us right here. Because they were prisoners, they were still captives, amen? But they did what he told them to do, and he said, now get dressed, get your shoes on, get your walking shoes on, because you're going for a trip. Yeah. You're going to leave here, amen, get ready, and act as though you believe what I'm telling yes. you. Prepare yes. to do what I'm telling you to do. Yes. Hear what I'm saying, amen, and do what I'm telling you. So yes. he shall eat and hasten his Lord's Passover. I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, despite the firstborn of the land of Egypt. 
And both man and beast against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So when he sees the blood, he sees us perfect. Yes. Amen. Now these Israelites were not perfect. We know they were because we see how their behavior all along. But the difference was he saw the blood and not the people. Right. When there was no blood, he could only see the people and their judgment came. Right. And it came swift, not because God was against them, but because there was no protection for them. Right. Mm -hmm. All right? So the Lamb is the central theme of the New Covenant, as it was in the Old Covenant, even though they didn't recognize it. Right. It was a type there, but it was pointing to the reality. And so that Lamb is the theme of the New Covenant. It is the revelation of the death of the Lamb that opens the Word of God in a way that releases the flow of the New Covenant to operate. Yes. Yeah. All right, Revelation chapter 5, 6 through 10. Now remember, we are spirit beings. That's how God sees us. He had to have a body. We had to have flesh and blood to be legal to operate here so that He could give us authority. But he doesn't see us as flesh and blood. He sees us as spirit. Yes. When he looked at Jesus, what he was speaking to was the spirit. The, Holy, the, the dove came and rested upon him and said, This is my beloved son of mine. Well pleased. Yes. The spirit of God, the fullness of the Godhead, was dwelling in him bodily. Uh -huh. So I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Now, in the midst of the throne, the throne is in the temple, amen, in the heavens, which is where we are seated with him in heavenly places. He sees what? He sees the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth in all earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Praise the Lord. So, keep going through 10. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden clouds full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, and out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth, okay? So the lamb that was slain opens the seals of the book and releases the operation yes. of the new covenant and it's a revelation of this slain lamb yes. that is the key to moving into this experience. Yes. Now this is more than just a bunch of weird little creatures. Amen. This is God talking to us about how the Spirit operates. Yes. Remember He told us He was going to give us the Holy Ghost that would lead us and guide us into all things so we would see things that we hadn't seen. We would understand things that we didn't understand. This is what he's talking about here. So look at Revelation chapter 6. And we're going to read, we're skip through here. Uh, Peter, I want to read first uh, Revelation 6 and 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder. No, that's, that's not right. I need Revelation 6. Yeah, that's Revelation 6, verse 1. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay. And when I saw the Lamb open one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. All right, verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. Verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the beast say, Come and see. And I beheld the little black horse, and he had, set upon, had a pair of balances in his hands. Verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. All right, now remember, these are all in that midst of where the lamb, the slain lamb is, right? Uh -huh. All right, look at Revelation now 22, verses 1 through 8. Revelation 22, 1 through 8. And he showed me a pure river of water, life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there were the trees of life, which were twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There shall be no more curse, but the throne of God, and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. 
And there shall be no night there, and they shall need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angels to show unto us his servants the things which must shortly be done. Mm -hmm. Behold, I come quickly, blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things. And heard them, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Okay, the four living uh, beings or creatures, their message is come and see. Yeah. Each time, come and see, come and see, yeah. come and see, come and see. And then in chapter 22, we come and we see, I saw. John says, I saw. What did he see? All the things that we saw, which are metaphors for the kingdom of God, the, yeah. the real reality of God operating through people. Right? Yeah. Healing, deliverance, prosperity, all the things, eternal life, all of that stuff is listed there. This is an invitation to us. Mm -hmm. Only, yeah. see, it's only when we can say, I saw, yeah. that we actually begin to operate yes. from that reality. Yes. And that's what he's constantly telling us is, come, see, yes. come, see, come, see, come, see, come, see yes. what I've said. Come see what yes. I told you. Come see what I'm saying. Come see what I'm yes. declaring. And when we can say, I saw, we begin to experience everything that God has told us to come and see. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's when we move into this. New covenant is all about, I see. I got a revelation. It's a full manifestation of the kingdom of God. It's what we're looking at here. This is more than theology. Yes. This is a relationship, a revelation yes. of yes. this rev of this relationship with Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Yes. Psalms 92, 10 through 15. Stay with me. I'll wrap up here quick. But you see what I'm saying? This we are spirits. Yeah. And that's what's so fantastic about the book of Revelation. It's a spirit book. It's a book speaking of all of the spiritual types and shadows throughout the entire Bible. And if we look at it that way, we see what it is God's trying to get us to. This is the, this is the final chapter, right? I mean, it's not the end of what God's doing, but it's the end for us to come to a revelation. And that's what I'm saying. That's what He's led us to all the way to the book of Revelation where we have this genuine revelation of Jesus Christ that begins to, yes. the, the new covenant begins to function in the way that God always yes. intended it to function. Yes. Because somebody got a revelation and started doing what he said. Instead of mixing everything and ruining it all, we've just let that go and moved on to something brand new, amen, that God wants to do in all of our lives. You've got to trust God for this kind of stuff. You, can't, you don't have theology and, and traditions to back you up. It takes faith. My horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eye also shall also see my desire on my enemies. My ears shall be, hear my desire, the wicked that rise up against me. This is the result. The, the righteous shall flourish. Amen. And so on and so forth. The, light, the righteous flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Mm -hmm. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Praise the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. Yes. Amen. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. He says at the very beginning, he's going to anoint me, amen, with uh, fresh oil. Yes. That word is a Hebrew word that actually means green or new. Amen. So it's ranaam is what the actual word is. And he says, I will give you a new anointing of life, rest, and peace. I heard somebody say that this morning. Jesus. You know, being renewed. Yes. Amen. It's how we get renewed. It's how we get this flesh renewed is by the yes. renewing of our mind. Yes. God has promised this stuff yes. to us. And we got people dying that should never have died. Yes. They should have lived another 50 years or 60 yes. years. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's intimacy that brings full restoration. Yes. Not just a knowledge of, but an intimacy yes. with, a revelation of. Right. You know? Amen. Right. I look, I hear. People saying it all the time. I've heard it ever since I got into the Pentecostal <laughs> circles. And you can catch it on channels all the time, charismatic. And I'm not against these people. I'm not judging. I'm just saying. I've heard them saying, declaring a new anointing is coming next year. Yeah. Yeah. 
right? I mean, I people just get flaky. They just what? They, they're, they're still trapped in a lot of traditions, but they're trying to be spiritual. So they come up with this stuff that is just bizarre. It doesn't make sense biblically. It doesn't make any sense relationally as far as God's concerned. But I've heard it every year from some new prophet. There's coming a new anointing. And what that means to them is that God's going to do something. He's going to repackage and redo some old thing that he's done. The same old thing over and over, whether you can talk about Brownsville, you can talk about Toronto, you can talk about this thing or that thing, or being slain in the spirit or something else. All of these different things. I'm not saying that they're not real. I'm just saying this person's got a new anointing for laughter. It's not a new anointing. Come on. Yeah. But we keep talking about as though it is. Yeah. That there's some new anointing going to come. Amen? <laughs> and we, they, what they're really saying is he's going to redo this old thing that he's done. The same old thing over and over and over with a new flair. Mm -hmm. With some new twist. Right. right? Revelation chapter 5 and 6 again. And look what he says. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are the temple of God. Yes. And God dwells in us. Right? So you have to, from that context, we read this. All right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm reading is not that God's going to do a new anointing next year. Not that somebody's going to have some special, different new anointing five years from now. But I'm reading that people are going to be full of eyes. People with vision for every realm. The natural and the supernatural. The Holy Spirit comes to lead us and guide us and to show us things to come, all things. That's what we're speaking of here. It's a metaphor for the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so he says that we're going to have eyes before and eyes behind. We're going to know the difference between Old Covenant and New Covenant. Yes. Right? What God has done and what God is doing. Yes. Within and without. Mm. Internally and externally. Yes. I can see the death side of the cross, but I can also see the life side of the cross. Yes. Yes. Not enough to know that he died for my sins. I have to know that he's now living in me, yes. healing me, delivering right. me, prospering me, yes. renewing right. me. Yes. We've got to have vision. Without a vision, my people perish. perish yes. And God is saying, behold, I do a new thing. Yes. Yeah. It's not a new thing God decides to do every five or ten years. No. Listen to what I'm saying. God only did one new thing. And that new thing is the new covenant. Uh, yes. It's the new cloth of Luke chapter 5. And the new wine. Yes. And the new wineskins. Yes. Behold, he's made all things new. Yes. By yes. one new thing. Yes. Yes. The one new thing is the new covenant. And everything yes. became new. We became new yes. creatures. It became yes. a new creation. Yes. Everything is new. Yes. If it's new, we have to function in that new. Yes. You can't function in the oldness and get the results of what yes. the new has. Right. Exactly. He did one new thing. And it made everything new. It changed yes. everything. And that's where we are. We have this new anointing. We have this new reality. We have this new relationship. Yes. We have this new authority. Yes. We have this new power. We have this... Yes. All things have become new. Yes. So we have to function from that reality. Exactly. What I say, I get yes. in agreement with the Word of God. I'm going to get the benefits and the results of what God has promised me. Right. We have to live from this reality. Yes. Is what He's telling us. Yes. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Yep. We live from that reality. Yes. And we live from that reality by faith. Yes. The faith of Jesus Christ. Yes. What He accomplished. Yes. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. All things have become new. Yes. And it's always new. Always. It's new every morning. His mercies are new every morning. It's all new every day. And the result of that is whatever I say, bring it before you said, believe me, I received it. I get it. I get the new stuff. Praise the Lord. You say, well, you know, I, I, we've struggled with this, but I don't care. Nope. <laughs> Doesn't matter. And if you want to continue believing that, you're going to continue getting that. Yeah. At some point, you're going to have to start living by faith. Yes. You say, well, I do live by faith. No, you're not living by faith unless you consistently live by faith. You don't live by faith for 24 hours and then start confessing the negative again and tell me you're living in faith. Exactly. You're in the new covenant, you're in the old covenant. Yeah. You've got a new piece of garment on an old thing and it's yeah. falling to pieces, it's yeah. falling apart yeah. right around you, amen you're putting new wine into old wine yeah. skins it's blowing up and messing up your outfit yeah. amen, because you're not consistent exactly. right, exactly. I'm preaching to me, listen, I, that's why I say, it isn't what goes through your head, it's right. what comes out of your mouth, yeah. so you get the thought you have to discipline yourself to just yeah. shut up yeah. don't say things that don't agree with this because yeah. it's going to grow up what yes. God's plan is for you. Yes. It's not a gimmick. This isn't some hocus pocus, you know, no. No. magic trick. No. This is who you are in Christ. And if you'll operate from that reality, you'll get the benefits. But you have to do it day in Amen. and day out. Amen. That's called faith. Yes. If you want the results and then you can shout hallelujah, you're doubting Thomas. You know, you're a double-minded person. Don't think you'll get anything from God. Not because God doesn't want to give it to you, because He's already given you all things. He's already yes. told us that. Yes. But the way we receive it is by faith. Yes. Amen. By believing Amen. the new covenant. Old things have passed away. Wow. What, what's the old things? The law. The, the, yes. the old covenant. Those things have passed away. They're not part of us anymore. That's being spiritual, church. It isn't, you know, that law. Where don't be a spiritual is simply believing yeah. what God says and saying what God says, and then you get the spiritual results. Yeah. But consistency is the key. Yeah. That's why Jesus said he only said what his father said. Exactly. He only did what his father did. That's what made him perfect, was yeah. he consistently yes, he said what God said. Yes, he consistently did. did what God yes. did. And anything else, he just ignored it. Yes. I heard somebody say, uh, when, when people come to, you know, when people would come to Jesus and say, you know, this doesn't work or that, that doesn't work, he never, he never argued with them. No. He didn't say it does too work. <laughs> he just say, oh, ye a little faith. Yeah. No. He didn't debate it. He didn't get into a big theological. Thing. He just said, the only difference between you and me is I believe you don't. Mm -hmm. All you need, he says, is faith as a grain of mustard seed. Right. So don't tell me. Look, here's the deal. I'm not trying to be critical. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just saying, don't bring an argument to me that has no substantiation because it doesn't make sense to argue that right. this doesn't work. Exactly. Then exactly. you might as well tell God he's a liar. Yes. Because that's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. If it doesn't work, it's not God. Right. It's something I'm not doing. That's right. Exactly. Right? That's, right. Right? that's it. And that's what we have to get settled it's not God punishing me. It's not God. No, he's completely happy with me. He loves me. He wants me to be blessed in every area. But the only way that can happen is if I will believe him, consistently believe him, and say what he says in spite of what the circumstances are. Because the enemy, as Tammy said, and I can promise you, stuff was happening all week long that was not consistent with what she was confessing. I tell this to all my kids. Sally will tell you the same thing. I've got a young daughter. They, they're, they, they've got four little kids, and they're, they're having some issues. And, and I mean, they've got a lot of good things going for them, but like any young family, you have obstacles and so forth. And I, I just, we help them, but yet at the same time, I tell them, look, here's the answer. Yes. This is life. This is yes. And I've lived some of it. Yeah. And I know the crap that in this world that happens isn't in agreement with this word. If you want that to change, you got to say what this says. Yes. I don't care. You don't even have to believe it. Just keep saying it. And eventually, faith will come by hearing the word. Absolutely. Amen. And you, I mean, in my house, some of you have been there. We've got, I've got confessions on the mirrors. Yeah. Upstairs and downstairs. Then what are you, nuts? No. Look, I know a human mind wants to go the way of the flesh. 
the only way to do that is every time you get in front of the mirror on the refrigerator or on the walls, we've even got some posters and things. Just look, and it's a constant reminder. Yes. This is what God said. This is what God said. This is what God said. Whenever my mind is thinking something different from what I'm seeing, I just shut up. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. And if Sally starts talking, I go upstairs. <laughs> It's just that we can't get what we want. And I understand because I'm thinking the same stuff. And sometimes we do this. Look, we, we think we're sharing. Right. You're not sharing. Exactly. You're confessing. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Well, how, how do you ever talk? Look, come on. What do you want? Exactly. Share that with me. Uh-huh. Don't tell me what you don't want. Don't tell me what you got. Exactly. Yeah. Am I being yeah. rude? Yes. No, that's it. I mean, I think it's just like I do with my kids. I'm not mean to them. I just say, you need to stop and think about what's coming out of your mouth. Exactly. Because that's what you're going to get. Exactly. Put your big boy pants on and be an adult. Because life happens to everybody. We all got crap. We all deal with it. And it's unfortunate. But, you know, you don't live 70 years without learning something. I mean, I'm not the brightest guy in the world. But, you know, beat me often enough with a club, I'll stay away from somebody with a club. I mean, I'll learn there's other ways of doing this, you know. Yeah. And so sometimes the easiest way is to just give in and then fall into self-pity and, you know, mm -hmm. feel bad. Mm -hmm. And Sally's a little bit more compassionate maybe than I am. And so she'll start sharing, you know, what this one said. Oh, no, no, no. I say, look. They're going to have to learn yeah. to do this for themselves. Yeah. I'm not being mean. I'm just saying, I know this works, and you know it works, yeah. because we've lived 40 years yeah. doing this. Yeah. And are we perfect? Absolutely not. But we know this works, and the other doesn't work, because we've tried both. Yeah. And I, the best way I can love my children and show that I care about them, and I do respect them, is to give them the information that will help them. Yeah. At some point, they got to do it. Yeah. Amen. You, you just can't keep calling Popo and Nana nope. for a bailout. Because my relationship with God, it doesn't help you unless you're willing to ha try to have the same kind of relationship. Yeah. And this is the beauty of it. We don't have to be perfect. No. You don't have to think, oh, yeah, but I never sinned the way. Oh, listen, don't say that to me. Because I've done it. I mean, I've, I've failed in every area of life. Parent, husband, son, you know, all employer, employee, everything. I mean, I've, I've messed it all up at some point. But it doesn't have to stay that way. No. No. And that doesn't have to determine who you are tomorrow. Exactly. Yes. That is true. God has already declared you righteous, yes. holy, perfect in his eyes, yes. an heir of all of these promises. Yes. The only way to get him, imitate your dad. Yes. Act like your father. Say what your father says, Amen. and you'll get what your father's got. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. 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 God bless all of you. Appreciate you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Same name, but it was Simon. Simon blessed him coming into the temple, and then Simon carried him to the cross. So I started looking into that to see what he was trying to tell me. <clears throat> and in uh, the Jewish language, his name is Shema. So that's how I think I'm saying it right. But that's how you pronounce Simon. And then uh, when you take all the Jewish laws and, and put them all together, it's called the Shema. So, it was, so God was trying to show me that when Jesus first came into the temple, the law took him up and said, Lord, I, my eyes have seen your salvation. Mm -hmm. The sign of saying, I've seen my, uh, your salvation. Mm -hmm. and let me go in peace and die, and pretty much die. And uh, if you notice, Simon didn't bless Jesus. He blessed Mary and Joseph because Jesus was more powerful than the law. 
sight of the law. And then when the, he went into the temple, it was Hannah, the prophetess that came in. And if you look Hannah's name up, it's Grace. And when Grace, then Grace came in and blessed, that's what blessed Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I think God, what God was trying to show me there is the law seen Jesus as a child and said, my time's done. Let me go in, in peace. And then Hannah came in, Grace came in, and said, now I would look, if you want the blessing, it's this baby is the grace you're looking for. And then I, was, then I think that he was showing me that it was the law that took Jesus to the cross and helped him. And in fact, yeah. Absolutely. And the Shema, by the way, is it's interesting to bring it up because God just narrows everything down, simplifies everything, and the Shema is literally, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Is one. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the end, the beginning and the end of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Dismissed in Jesus' name.